Welcome to what's going to be the first of a series of informal lectures. These are going to be short sessions, usually about uh, 10 minutes in length. And what I'll typically do is to highlight the most important concepts that, that uh, the author includes in the uh, reading assignment. Uh, also, uh, typically what I'll do is add some additional information that I, I think needs to be um, considered. And usually there will be a different perspective or two that I like to introduce um, that is uh, different from the one taken by the authors. First, uh, we're going to begin by considering the definition of the word curriculum. I'd like to uh, try to define the word curriculum because uh, our textbook authors actually never get around to doing this. And I think it will be helpful from uh, the outset. If we take the uh, classical uh, definition, we see that it comes from the Latin verb carere, and it means literally to run a course. But you know, that's not the definition that we hear around uh, schools, typically. If we ask students uh, their definition of curriculum, uh, they're going to say, well, that's what the teacher tells us to do. And if you ask teachers what they think the curriculum is, they're going to say, that's what I'm told to teach. But you might be among those teachers who um, says, that's not actually what I teach. I teach uh, more than that. I, I go beyond that curriculum. That's what I teach despite what I'm told to teach, or in addition to what I'm told to teach. Still, we need a, a technical definition, a definition that is agreed upon by educators, especially curriculum specialists. And the one that uh, I'm going to use as a starting point for the course comes from Ronald Dole. And uh, you can read the definition yourself, but uh, there are a couple of phrases here that I want to uh, point out as very important to understanding this definition. First, notice, this, notice that he uses uh, uh, the phrase formal and informal. In other words, uh, there are learning experiences that um, are extracurricular or um, even are a part of the hidden curriculum that make up uh, the learning outcomes as well as the uh, uh, formal curriculum. He also uses the phrase content and process. Uh, in his definition, how we go about learning is going to be um, a very important part of the curriculum, uh, as important perhaps even as the subject matter or content that we plan for the curriculum and uh, understand here, too, that he's using a rather broad uh, definition of what learning is. Um, when he says knowledge and skills and attitudes and appreciations and values. As correct as uh, Professor Dole's definition is, it, it's a bit of a mouthful. And so we want to reduce this to a little uh, simpler uh, definition, one that will uh, serve us uh, week to week as we use the term in uh, the various discussions that we have planned. And the one that I would like to propose is simply the curriculum is the sum of all planned learning experiences in a school. But that's not all that goes into uh, the learning uh, process. The curriculum is what we plan. The instruction is how we implement that plan. And the two together are really what produces learning. In this course, however, we're not really focusing on instructional methodologies and techniques. Our, our, uh, our interest is going to be what we plan the curriculum to be. And I think we can probably say that in about three words. Why, what, and how. Uh, that would be all you need to know about curriculum. Now, of course, as soon as I say that, I've got to uh, also sort of warn us that, that uh, when we begin to unpack the meaning of each of these three words, we see that there's a little bit more to it than that. The why refers to purpose and goals. Uh, the purposes of a, formal uh, of a formal education and the goals, the learning outcomes that we hope students accomplish as a result of that education. The what refers to the content, the subject matter and the skills and the values and the attitudes that we hope to incorporate into the curriculum. And the how refers to the learning process and the actual method of teaching. Now, if we look at the why, purpose and goals, we see that there is a tension between the traditionalists and the progressivists. Now, in a couple of weeks, we're actually going to take up um, a discussion of this uh, tension when we um, 
consider curriculum theory. For right now, what I want to do is to just introduce the idea that curriculum planning is actually a decision-making process. It's a process of making decisions about why and what and how. And most importantly, who makes those decisions. When we look at the term what, or content, we see that there are really three technical terms that apply to curriculum that we need to um, um, grasp right here at the outset. Scope, sequence, and articulation. Scope refers to how much, uh, the uh, extent of the curriculum. And there really are three issues that we need to take up when we talk about scope. Uh, the first is breadth and depth how broad the curriculum should be, that is, how much subject matter we should try to cover, and how deep the curriculum should be, how complex, um, how detailed. The second is what we refer to as the canon versus uh, a modern perspective on curriculum. The canon would refer to uh, our uh, notion that the curriculum should be based upon uh, historic uh, knowledge and, and uh, uh, subject matter of, of timeless and enduring value. Uh, the uh, other perspective on that is that the curriculum needs to be relevant, current, uh, needs to be focused on contemporary issues and uh, future-oriented. A uh, third issue that we need to take up when we discuss scope is whether the curriculum uh, should be, the content of the curriculum should be standardized uh, across all of the districts in a state or all of the states in a nation or whether the scope of the curriculum, that is, what's included in the curriculum, should be simply a matter of local control uh, that is decided by individual schools or school districts. When we take up the matter of sequence, sequence we're asking in what order should the knowledge be structured? And there's another aspect of sequence that we uh, need to, to look at, and that is articulation. The way I would like to explain this is to consider the analogy of a train. You know, you can put all of the cars in the right order, the engine first, and then the freight cars, and the caboose at the end. But unless you actually couple these cars together, unless you join them together, you don't really have a train. You just have a series of train cars. And a curriculum is the same way. We can put the aspects of a curriculum in the right order, but unless we join them together, unless we uh, fit them together so that there is continuity from grade level to grade level or subject to subject, then we don't have a curriculum. We just have um, uh, segments of knowledge, um, independent skills. Now, the two dimensions of articulation are vertical and horizontal. Vertical articulation refers to the continuity of the curriculum from grade level to grade level. Horizontal articulation, on the other hand, refers to the integration of subject matter across disciplines within a grade level. So horizontal articulation would refer to how, uh, for example, in high school, the course in American history correlates with or fits together with uh, the course in American literature. Uh, vertical articulation would refer to what a student learns in the fourth grade, getting that student ready to uh, be successful in the fifth grade. Now there's some other terms that we need to uh, reach a common understanding of um, as we uh, get started in our study of curriculum. Uh, the ones I would like to uh, uh, look at right now are measurement, evaluation, assessment, and alignment. Measurement simply is the numerical value that we give to an observation. For example, we can measure how high a student can jump, or we can measure how many uh, problems a student answers correctly on a math test. Uh, these, however, are just raw scores or raw information, and uh, don't tell us uh, too much uh, in ways of describing how that student um, uh, performs in relation to other students, or how that student performs in relation to a uh, criterion or a, a standard. When we apply standards, that's when we begin to make value judgments. Um, we have to first measure accomplishment or achievement or progress 
then we make value judgments about that measurement. So for example, if a student answers um, 18 problems correctly, that doesn't tell us too much other than what the student's raw score on a, on a test is. But if we say that that score of 18 is average, that is that that score represents what most of the students at that point in time also do on that particular test, then we can make the value judgment that that student is making average progress. Now there's another term that gets used in um, measurement and evaluation discussions, that's assessment. Uh, all too often the term is used as a synonym to evaluation and it actually goes a little bit beyond uh, what we normally associate as the meaning of the term evaluation. Assessment is evaluation used for the purpose of guiding future educational progress. I think this is an important distinction that we make uh, because when we assess a student what we're doing is measuring a student's progress, making a value judgment about that student's progress, but the purpose, the purpose is to inform educational decisions that will help that student improve. Evaluation, on the other hand, has uh, a bit more finality to it. Uh, the, the difference between the two words, I think, um, can be understood better if we sort of understand the etymology of them. When we use the term evaluate, we are literally making a value judgment about a student. When we use the word assessment, uh, we're using a word that comes to us from the Latin through the French, and it means literally to sit beside, to guide to advise. And that's what we're trying to do when we conduct assessment. We're trying to gain information to use for the purpose of advising future educational progress. Alignment refers to how a test actually matches up with what we think is supposed to be taught in the curriculum. If we have perfect alignment, then the test is going to be a perfect match with what we think the curriculum is supposed to be teaching. Let me show this to you in a diagram. If we think of the curriculum as what's supposed to be taught, the sum of all planned learning experiences, and that's represented by the uh, circle on the top, and then the instruments that we're going to be using to evaluate how students achieve in that curriculum, and we represent that by the circle at the bottom, we can see in this case that we have just barely the two circles overlapping one another. In other words, the test that we're using is not really matching up with what it is that is supposed to be taught. Now if we had perfect alignment, then these two circles would be congruent. Uh, one of the um, issues that we're dealing, in, uh, dealing with in, in uh, California right now is the matter of curriculum alignment the state tests actually matching up with the state uh, curriculum framework and those curriculum frameworks matching up with the district curriculum guides. Obviously if students are going to do well on the state tests then what we need to be doing in the classrooms would reflect what's on those tests. What's on those tests needs to be reflected in the state's curriculum standards and those state curriculum standards need to be consistent with what our uh, district curriculum guides are. Getting all of these documents to fit together is what we call curriculum alignment. Okay, now we're ready to get started with the rest of the course. Um, I think all of the instructions are going to be self-explanatory. Uh, if you click on the buttons on the left of the screen, then uh, you'll see what you're supposed to be doing with the different assignments. Um, there will be one that's due this week. Uh, that's the reader response to our reading assignment. And then I've also outlined uh, the instructions for the course projects that you need to begin working on. Uh, if you have any questions about these, anything that's not quite clear, then uh, don't hesitate to email me wi with your question, or if you're more comfortable just calling me on the phone, uh, that's okay too. Uh, look forward to hearing from you, and uh, good luck with uh, the assignments this week.